Welcome to MarcusG.TV. I'm Chef Marcus Giuliano and I'm a chef on a mission. Today's mission I want to talk about alcohol. Alcohol and sports performance. Now, if you've been following my videos, you know that I've cut my alcohol back drastically. I mean drastically when compared to what I was doing before. I own a restaurant. Uh, we have 250 craft beers, 300 wines, and almost 400 spirits. And uh, it's all independently owned. It's all really cool, awesome stuff. So sometimes I get really excited about it and a new beer comes on tap and I would have a beer, I'd have two beers, a new wine, a wine salesman comes in. Um, I was always on the lookout for new stuff and I was still, you know, doing a small amount of running throughout that time. Well, the beginning of the year I said enough with the drinking. I'm only going to drink maybe once a month if that's it. And I did very well for the first couple months, three, four, five months, phenomenally well. Um, but I want to talk about a personal experience that I had just the other day. Now, my five, my 10K running time, I went my best. I went my PR of all time, my personal record. And I did a hilly course in 43 minutes, just under 43 minutes. I had a hilly course uh, here and where I live in my hometown, 530 feet of incline over uh, six miles. Very hilly course. And I, I smoked the course by like six minutes off my best time, five minutes, something like that. It was phenomenal. Two weeks later, I have a race. Orange Classic in Middletown, New York, it's a much flatter course, 200, oh, 200 feet less in incline. So it's a flatter course. I'm thinking, man, PR, personal record again. Here we go. And I had a wine festival the week, the same weekend as the race. I had a wine festival starting Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Now, I was one of the presenters at this wine festival, so I was one of the ones cooking there. And I was there all weekend uh, with a hundred other wine makers from all over the world that were wanting to share their wine. So I partook in alcohol that weekend. And I knew that I shouldn't have been partaking, you know, as much as I should have, or really at all, because I know that alcohol is detrimental to working out. So I wanted to talk about what alcohol does uh, for sports performance. Now, needless to say, I did not get a PR. In fact, I was 30 seconds slower in this race than my last race I did, which had 200 feet more of incline. So I was really, really upset that I did not, I did it in 44.20. I was expecting to, uh, to really get 41 minutes. I was, expect, I was really expecting to do a 41 minute 10K. That's what my goal was. That's what I was expecting. That's what I was targeting for. But I drank Thursday a little bit. I drank Friday and I drank Saturday. And this is what happens when you drink alcohol. So I found a great, you know, I did a lot of Google searching for this because um, I wanted to exact get some exact quotes here. And, you know, and I wanted it more than, oh, alcohol is 150 calories a glass. And if you work out, you know, run a mile, two miles, and you have two glasses of wine. You, I wanted to avoid the whole caloric offset. I wanted to really f follow what was happening in, the or in your organs on an internal level. So. Um, I found this great website called drinkaware.co.uk and uh, here's what it says. Overall, alcohol is detrimental to sports performance because of how it affects the body during exercise and it does this in two ways. Firstly, alcohol is diuretic, which means it makes your kidneys produce more urine. Drinking too much of it can lead to dehydration, which we all know. We wake up in the morning, we want to drink water, we have dry mouth, we, we know, a lot of us know the effects of too much alcohol. Um, exercising soon after drinking can make this dehydration worse because your body uh, sweats as your temperature rises, right? Combined uh, sweating and the diuretic effect of the exercise make dehydration much more likely. Your body needs to be hydrated when you exercise to maintain the flow of blood throughout your body, which is essential for circulating oxygen and nutrients to your muscles. So the less Water is diuretic. It gets rid of it makes it gets rid of water in your system. You need water to pump everything. You need water to pump. You need water to maintain your body temperature. So you're going to overheat much quicker. Okay, possibility of of, of overexertion, heating, you're over, overheating yourself is much more likely. Um, so here it says hydration also helps control your body temperature. Um, alcohol interferes with the body, the way your body makes energy. When you're metabolizing or breaking down alcohol, the liver can't produce as much glucose, which means you have low levels of blood sugar. Exercise requires high levels of sugar to give you energy, okay? 
If your liver isn't producing enough glucose, your performance will be adversely affected. If your body is forced to run from your supplies of fat rather than your blood sugar, you will be slower and have less energy and won't be able to exercise as intensely. Okay, now it's interesting because if you're on the high protein diet, low carb diet, is, isn't that kind of what's happening? You know, you won't be, I know a lot of people that cut out carbs that have no energy whatsoever. They are exhausted. They say it's a major down. I, I know a, several handfuls of people that say this sucks. It sucks, it sucks, it sucks. So sort of the same concept. Um, but I'm not going on a, on, I'm not, I wasn't planning on touching on diet uh, specifically on this video. I just wanted to really stress the alcohol. Um, so as a result, your coordination, dexterity, concentration, or reactions could be adversely affected. Both of these effects are immediate, which is why it's not advised to exercise or compete in a sport soon after drinking alcohol. Um, alcohol and your heart rate. Um, most worryingly, drinking can increase the potential for unusual heart rhythms. This is a risk which significantly increases during exercise for up to two days after consumption. And that's a really great thing. Two days after consumption, you're still getting affected. How much you need to drink to be at risk depends upon the individual, okay? But the risk increases if you are a irregular drinker. So the, if you're not conditioned to be drinking and you're drinking, you're, the, the body's not gonna be able to recover as quick. It's not used to that. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I'm really pissed off that that that, that I, I drank as much as I even did, and I, and like I said, you, if you've been following my videos, you know that I've been really, really cut so far back. I mean, January I drank one day, February I drank one day, March I drank one day. I mean, and that was it. I, I just wasn't touching alcohol at all, and it's been like that. And yeah, in May I probably drank two, three days, four days because I had that wine festival, and there were a couple other days that I tasted. I went to a, a, a big beer tasting. Um, but really, it's my job in my restaurant. I do a lot of spitting now, so I'll taste and I'll spit, but still you get absorbed to a certain extent where, you know, it's just, I can smell and just take a little small, tiny taste. I don't really consider that because it's my job and I have to taste and I have wine vendors coming all the time, but I just take the smallest, smallest amount, like literally like less than a tablespoon, and I'll either spit that or I'll enjoy that little bit of savor and, and swallow it. So, um, but it's part of my job, so it's like, well, I, had, I just had to cut I had to cut that out. I just had to really curtail it. It's not like I'm at home where I have no alcohol. I'm at a restaurant where there's alcohol everywhere, and I actually love the taste of beer, love the taste of IPAs. I love the taste of a lot of these. So it's really hard to say, well, you'd think it was hard, but on the diet that I'm at, like, again, I don't want to go on my diet here, but the diet that I'm on, the high-carb diet, when you carb up, you have no cravings for alcohol, which is great, which is phenomenal. So that's really been the saving grace here is this high carb diet that I'm doing. I don't want to drink. Um, I have no desire to drink. I eat a, drink a smoothie, eat some fruits, have a couple of bananas. Alcohol cravings are gone. So um, exercising and drinking, we all know common sense that says you shouldn't do it. But here's some, this was some really, really good information that I found that I had to share, um, that I have shared with some friends before. So um, I'm Chef Marcus Giuliano. Uh, thank you for watching this video. If you like my videos, please hit like, subscribe to my channel, and definitely pass it on. And definitely pass on the booze if you're working out.